We're coming to a point where John was baptized in the river. Philip and Nathaniel was following Christ. And we're in chapter 2. And Jesus Christ is going to turn, turn the water into wine. <laughs> and what's rad is Nathaniel was just sitting there and talking to Jesus Christ. And Jesus was telling him that I saw you under a fig tree. And, and, do you, and, and, and that's why you believe. But he said you'll see greater things than these, man. And he did. He's gonna, they're going to see it. Listen to this. God is going to turn water into wine. And this is going to be the raddest chapter that you've ever heard. I mean, this is the radicalest part of the whole Bible for me. I think this is the most awesome part of the Bible for me. Because not only does it describe Jesus Christ as deity, but it talks about, you know, how much... We as believers need to understand that when God calls us into something, we need to listen. So let's pray it out, man. This this is going to be about the third. You um, come, Lord Jesus. Holy Spirit, fill this place and give us, Father, your wisdom and speak right now. In Jesus' name, amen. Welcome back to Growing in His Word. I'm, I'm Joseph and... This is the radical, radical, radical chapter, man. Are you guys ready? (laughs) This is so rad because we believers never seem to understand why God does things. Yeah, cool. Isn't it funny that Jesus Christ was raised on the third day? Wow. However, Christ changes water to wine, but on the third day, chapter 2, for John, John chapter 2, on the third day, there was a wedding in Cana of Galilee. And the mother of Jesus was there. Now both Jesus and his disciples were invited to the wedding. Man, this was a low-budget wedding. <laughs> and when they ran out of wine, the mother of Jesus said to him, They have no wine. And Jesus said to her, Woman, What does your concern have to do with me? My hour has not yet come. His mother said to her, Servants, whatever he says to you, do it. Think about it. Listen to this, man. The disciples were invited to the wedding. The wedding's coming. It's a Jewish wedding. They have, it's the the third day here. You've got the Jewish wedding. The wine's representing the blessing. The, the the marriage is, is really, really, really important because um, they're going to do the announcement. And without the wine, the rabbi can't do the announcement. And you're thinking, okay, cool. So step one, you have the wine, which represents the, the blessing. And step two, you have the separation. I mean, there's a lot of stuff that goes on in between. But step three, you have the permission from the father to receive the bride. And the and then the gathering together, they get they come live together, and then they you know step four they 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 set up the consummation, and so they're at this wedding feast, they're getting under the hoopa, they're wedding, they're getting married, they're gonna have this uh, party for seven days because that's the customs, and the bridegroom is hiding his bride in the bride in the bridal chamber, and after seven days she's gonna come out and she's gonna show her face. Wow, what a trip! They're going to give this blessing over the wine. And Jesus is walking up with his disciples that he just converted over. I mean, they're they're probably on fire. They're just like tripped out like, wow, we just got out of the river and now we're going to get drunk. And Jesus is like, no, you're not going to get drunk. (laughs) You're going to serve. (laughs) And so now here we go, man. Chapter 2, verse 1. On the third day, there was a wedding in in Cana of Galilee. And the mother of Jesus was there. Now both Jesus and his disciples were invited to the wedding. And when they ran out of the wine, the mother of Jesus said to him, They have no wine. Jesus said to her, Don't wine, I got I got you covered. I'm just kidding, it doesn't say that. It says, verse 4 says, Jesus said to her, Woman, what does your concern have to do with me? My hour has not yet come. Jesus was talking about his resurrection, about dying for us on the cross. They don't even know it. They're all being set up for His glory, and they don't even know it. Jesus Christ is going to start His first public ministry. Here it comes. Here comes the miracles. Listen, His mother said to the servant, 
Whatever he says to you, do it. Here's the thing, man. Jesus calls his mother a woman. He's separating his self from his mother. Meaning, he's starting to show his deity. He's starting to show her that he is not. Yes, he is her son, but he is God. Mary was sitting there telling her son straight out. I know, listen to what it says in verse 5. His mother said to the servants, whatever he says to you, do it. Why? Why did she say that? His mom even did as he said. That's huge. You don't order your mother around. And he separated himself from his mother as God. He took his deity and threw it in her face with love and said to his mother, Woman, what does your concern have to do with me? You know, it's funny because we always wrestle with what God calls us to do. John chapter 10 verse 27 says that, My sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me and I give them eternal life. And they shall never perish, neither shall anyone snatch them out of my hand. We as believers need to listen to Christ. We need to listen to what he says like Mary did. Sometimes we we fight and we we argue. We pray and God tells us. And people say, you know, I had a, a, a woman ask me the other day. She said, how do you know it's from God? And I said, well, you gotta, did you pray about it? Well, do you audibly hear his voice? No. You feel conviction, number one, if it's wrong. And number two, it's going to come to pass. Just like these waters, these jugs of water are going to be filled with, with, with radical wine to the brim. Jesus will let you know that it's either right or wrong. We pray, we cross reference, we look and God lines it up and it comes. It's not forced. God doesn't force his way on you. He doesn't say, come here and give me this. No, Jesus wants to have a personal relationship with you. And they're getting married. Jesus is showing up. He got invited. It wasn't like he barged in to this low-budget wine uh, wedding. And his mother's saying, whatever he wants, do it. So check this out, man. Verse 6 says, In other words, there were set there six water pots of stone according to the manner of purification of the Jews. Now, containing 20 or 30 gallons apiece. These are like 120 to 180 gallons. Okay? And and these gallons were used for basically the dirty roads. Back then, they didn't have the roads. They weren't paved, man. You couldn't just go to the concrete and wash yourself off. They had dirty roads. And so the dirt was everywhere, and they were using this water to clean their feet. And the roads were dirty and they needed to pray over the food in between. This was the purification according to the law of Moses. So so it was a Jewish tradition that required several kinds of ceremonial washing. It was, it was really the way they did it. And so they would wash their hands. And when they would wash their hands, they would say, Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melecha olam, asher kedeshinu b'mitzvotav v'tivanu arnitilat yadayim. Which means, blessed are you, Lord, our God, King of the universe, who has sanctified us with his commandments and commanded us concerning the washing of the hands. Sorry, my voice is under the weather, you guys. I'm, I, have a, I have a bad cold. <laughs> Sorry. So God is on the move, man, and he's, he, it's going to book quick. It's going to catch up quick. Are you ready? Jesus Christ is preparing himself to die on the cross for our sins. Our sins are going to be what puts him on the cross. But here he, are, here he is purifying. Listen to this. He's purifying the water. He's making it clean. He's cleaning up town. Purification is happening. The Jews are using the water to clean themselves. Listen to this. It's all ceremonial, but this is all, this is radical, this wedding. It represents so many nuggets that we can't even get into. But Jesus is showing his deity. He's showing his love. He's showing his mercy. He's representing the blessing between man and a woman. He's, 
He's going to sit there and show all these people that he is the father. And, and, the, and, and he's telling his mother, I'm not, I'm not your son, I'm God. You know, his public ministry is starting. And she's telling him whatever he says, do it. But we never listen, we blow it. We, 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 we're disobedient. We need to learn how to lean on Jesus for everything. We gotta let fear out of our lives. Please, church, listen, believers, podcast tuners, we need to let fear out of our life. Fear is of the devil. Listen, verse six says, now there was, they set the pots, we're there, okay? And and verse seven says, Jesus said to them, fill the water pots with water, and they filled them up to the brim. Jesus wants to fill us to the brim. Look, he's filling them to the brim already. This is symbolic. Watch, verse by verse. And he said to them, draw some out now and take it to the master of the feast. And they took it. And when the master of the feast had tasted the water that was made into wine, he did not know where it came from. But the servants who had drawn the water knew the master of the feast called the bridegroom. Verse 10 says, And he said to him, Every man at the beginning sets out the good wine, and when the guests have well drunk, then the inferior you have kept the good wine until now. The Gospel of John, listen, the miracles of Jesus are called signs. Okay? Indicating that they pointed to his Messiahship. There's seven signs here that point to it. Okay? It's this this signifies that Christ gets the glory and that his deity is real. And when Jesus transformed the water into wine, he demonstrated his power. That he had power. Okay? And so, as believers, we have to understand that God is Jesus and He has power. He has power to remove any obstacles in our lives. Jesus is coming to a wedding not to crash it, but to bless it. It's a low-budget wedding. Their wine isn't really that expensive. Jesus is going to turn it into the best wine they've ever tasted in this world. The wine is not only going to represent the blood that he shed for our sins on the cross, but it's going to represent that he is the bridegroom. And we are his church believers. We're his church. And we can enter into a relationship with Jesus. We don't have to worry. We don't have to fret and ponder about what's going to happen in our life. The master of the feast at the Jewish wedding is is the governor. And and basically, Jesus is going to be the guy, the number one awesome God who sets this up for his glory. The disciples are 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 wondering, wow, wow, this is amazing. Listen to this. Here we go. Are you ready, guys? Get, get your seatbelts on. This, this is going to be fast and radical. And he said to them, Every man at the beginning sets out the good wine. And when the guests have well drunk, then the inferior, listen to this, you have kept the good wine until now. Jesus, his blood is the good wine. Verse 11 says, "This begin. Listen, this is the beginning of, of signs that Jesus did in Cana of Galilee and manifested his glory. His glory, not ours, and his disciples believed in him. It was all about showing his deity. Now God's on a roll, man. He's 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 on his way out, man. Listen, the beginning of these. Listen to this, verse eleven. The beginning of the signs that Jesus did in Cana of Galilee and manifested his glory, and his disciples believed in him. Listen, they got married. Um, the Bible says in Mark chapter uh, ten, verse six through twelve that. But from the beginning of the creation, God made the male made the male and female. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. So they are no longer two, but one flesh. <laughs> the mother-in-law has to get out. <laughs> I'm sorry, man, but therefore what God has joined together, let no man separate. And sometimes mother-in-laws want to stay. Or they want to get in the marriage. 
And you're thinking, man, how do we go from wine to mother-in-laws? Is this pastor drunk? <laughs> no. No, listen. God created us to be come together after we're married and be clinged on to Him, not other people. It's important as believers that we, we, we keep our faith in Jesus. Listen, Jesus set out to claim ownership of heaven and earth. He is our God. He is our maker. Jesus is our maker. And he loves us. He made these pots of water. He did this work. The Jews are sitting there. And they're praying. And you know they needed the wine. And they ran out of wine. And they needed this wine. Jesus was there for them. He came through. They had the prayer ready. They had a long prayer. So many prayers. They didn't even know that the Messiah was there. Listen, they were praying the blessing. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam asher barah sasan sasan v'simacha chatan. It goes on forever. But but basically, it's bless art the Lord of our God, King of the universe, who, universe who created joy and gladness. Goes all the way down in Hebrew. It talks about bless art the Lord. Who gladdens the groom with the bride. And here Jesus is. He's listening to him. You know he is, man. He's listening to him. And he's he's just tripping out probably like, these guys don't even know that I'm here. <laughs> They're drinking my wine. <laughs> he did this for the servants who were just baptized. The disciples. He's collecting. Jesus Christ is collecting people. And he's saying, I want to collect you. You're thinking today, dude, what are you talking about? No, Jesus is saying, you, yes, you, through Pastor Joseph's mouth, into the airway, into the podcast, into you. Jesus Christ is speaking to you. He wants to collect you. He wants to marry you. What are you talking about? He wants to enter into a relationship that you cannot get out of. He wants to save your soul. In Hebrew, the word means nefesh, but nefesh. He wants to save your soul. He wants to grab you, hold you, love you, take you to places that you've never been to in this life. Listen, this sermon is so radical because Jesus, I'm, I'm on fire for the Lord. I'm sorry I'm so on fire. I just, I, I wish you could see this marriage. This marriage is symbolic and it's between us and God. It's, it's it's the church. It's Revelations 21. It says, Now I say I saw the new heaven, a new earth, for the first listen, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away. Also there was no more sea. Listen to this. Then I, John, saw the holy city, new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with me, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people. God himself will be with them and be their God. Jesus is taking us. He's coming back for us. Here he is in John chapter 2. He's at the wedding. He's, he's paying the bill. He's paying the he's paying for the best wine. They're getting drunk and he's probably looking at them sober because Jesus Christ had no sin. He's probably looking at them sober going, "Wow." Smiling. If these people would just do like my mother said, do as they said, do, do as he says. Obedience. Jesus Christ desires obedience. We need to be obedient and listen to his call. How do we do that? Number one, we pray. Number two, we don't drink wine anymore. Just, you know, I mean, just kidding when you need it, but we don't get drunk. We don't live in drunkness. We live in the light. We live in the truth. We have a relationship with Jesus. As believers, we struggle, but Jesus Christ is going to be there for us because He loves us. He knows who we are. He knows our wants. He knows our needs. He sees our future, and He knows our thoughts. And they're of good thoughts, the Bible says. Jeremiah 
So we need to focus. Listen, church, we need to focus on he's coming back. The signs are here. His message is clear. He's the Messiah. He's going to die for us. It's lining up. Philip and Nathaniel, they're following Christ. The snowball effect of following Jesus is coming. Jesus is gathering his disciples. His disciples believe. They receive. Christ is going to clean up the temple soon. And all these people who are on TV and all these televangelical pastors that are begging for money and screaming, Hallelujah! With their sowing in the seed message is going to go out into the garbage soon. Jesus is going to say, you know what? I'm done with it. What are you talking about? What are you talking about? What does this have to do with the message? Well, it's simple. It's simple. Listen, verse 12 says, after, after this, he went down to Capernaum. He, his mother, his brothers, and his disciples, and they did not stay there many days. Okay? There's two types of cleaning that's going on, man. Jesus Christ is, Christ is cleaning our hearts, our, our, our life. He's given us a new relationship with him, and now he's going to clean out the church. Wow. Really? Yeah. Listen. Now the Passover of the Jews was at hand, verse 13. And Jesus went up to Jerusalem. He's walking up to Jerusalem. And he found in the temple those who were selling oxen and sheep and doves. And the money changers. You know, in Israel, they change money. They, 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 they take the, the, the shekel and they, and they, and they, they take one day it's 4.3, one day it's 2.4, one day it's 5.3. And they're changing the money. They're, they're, they're money changing. They're making money off of money. As weird as it sounds, they're, they're, they're making money. Their, their business dealings are, are walking into the temple now. Now, you got to remember, you got to think to yourself, Jesus grew up in a synagogue. He taught in the synagogue. He made his bar mitzvah in the synagogue. He did what the Jews did. He was Jewish. He knew. He knew the halacha, the law. He, was, he knew what the law was. He knew the Mosaic law. He knew the Mosaic law. He knew exactly what was going on. So now he's going back to his, his, the Judaism. And he's going in there and he's trying to clean out the, Ju the Judaizers who were the, the Pharisees and the hypocrites and the people changing the money. And what's rad is this is the only time he made a whip. <laughs> Listen, in verse 15 it says, When he had... Made a whip of cords, he drove them all out of the temple with the sheep and oxen, and he poured out the changers' money and overturned the tables. And he said to those who sold doves, Take these things away, do not make my father's house a house of merchandise. And then, listen to this, then his disciples remembered that it was written, Zeal for your house has eaten me up. You know what that means? That's the deep listen, this is the this is awesome because. He's presenting himself as the Messiah. Malachi 3, chapter 3, 1 through 3. It basically expresses my father's house. It was a distinct claim to the Messiahship. See, at the wedding, of, at the wedding in Cana, Jesus demonstrated his deity and power. Here, he's showing his authority. Remember, in, in, and he recalled his words in Psalm 69, 9. Listen, the disciples understood that Jesus was claiming to be the Messiah. You see... The, the Jews, they're basically, they were mad. They're, they're upset. What's this guy doing? But, but, but the Jews, uh, you know, they, they, they understood that Jesus was representing himself as the Messiah. So they asked for a sign. In Corinthians, it says that. 1 Corinthians 1, chapter 1, verse 22. But Jesus, listen to this. Jesus is talking about, Jesus is talking about the whip he made, man. You're thinking, no, he's not. Yes, he is. What do we see today? Is it true? What has happened in our churches today? We see, not all churches, please, don't, oh, I don't want no emails from pastors. Oh, yeah, you think we're all evil. No, listen. We see pastors dealing business in the church. They're, they're, they're asking for money, they're on the radio waves. They're 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 preaching the sowing the seed that you're going to be healed of all these diseases if you give money. They even got prayer rags they want to sell you. You know we're going to send you a prayer cloth. Yeah, 
Didn't you know Jesus had worn this, man? Yeah, he wore this walking down to Galilee. Send it in here. He cried over it when he wept over Israel, when he gathered them like friends. Oh, baloney, uh, Maloney, baloney. Stop it. Stop it, Joel. You're robbing people from their future. Give them the word of God, Joel. I mean, this, this is verse by verse. Jesus Christ wants a relationship with you, not a, a dollar relationship. Jesus is cleaning out the temple and he's showing his first public example of him being God in the church saying, look, you're not going to come into my church and do the Jimmy swagger on my, on my sheep. You're not going to sit there and steal money from the church when they're barely making men and ends meet. If they want to give 10%, give 10%. Don't force them. I went, to the, I went to a church the other day. Some guy invited me. You got to check this church out, Pastor. Oh, it's radical. The Holy Ghost is moving there. I said, okay, I'll go. I don't really want to because God told me it's going to be really radical. <laughs> so I walk in the church, man. And, oh, brother, come on up. It's time to pay the tithings. And they got this big old pot of money in the front of the church. And the pastor's sitting there. Family. Come to the shepherd. Come bring your money and put it at the altar. It's sad. The disabled people probably felt bad. You know, I said, hey, dude, the guy in the wheelchair over there, he, you know, I mean, he can't work. He's on a set income. How does he feel? I don't know. I never asked him. Ask him. These are the wits Jesus is cracking. It's sad. It's a horrible. Don't make my father's house a, a, a merchandise. You know, then his disciples remember that it was written, zeal for your house has eaten me up. Zeal for your house has eaten me up. What does that mean? Church, what does that mean? If, if you listen in, in, in Numbers chapter 25, David describes himself as a, ze- a zealot for the house of the Lord. Jesus is cleansing, cleansing the temple. It was basically a, f- a fulfillment of, the, of these words. I mean, Psalm 69 puts it there. Because the, the zeal uh, for your house is eating me up. And the reproaches of those who reapproach have fallen on me. When I wept, I chastened my soul with fasting that, be- that became my reproach. Look, we gotta, we got we to gotta stop. What has this society become? The word of God is free. Jesus said, who the son sets free is free indeed. I'm not here trying to, trying to blow your buzz, man. This is real. We're living in the last days. God has a plan for us. The Jews answered and said to him, what sign do you show to us since you do these things? And Jesus answered and said to them, destroy this temple and in three days I will raise it up. Then the Jews said, it has taken 40 years to build this temple. And will you raise it up in three days? But he was speaking of his temple, of his body. The resurrection, man. He was talking about, he's claiming ownership, man, that he's God. Therefore, he had, therefore, when he had risen from the dead, his disciples remembered that. He had said this to them. And they believed. Listen, they believed the scripture and the word which Jesus had said. Now, when he was in Jerusalem at the Passover. During his feast, many believed in his name, and when they saw the signs, which he did, but Jesus did not commit himself to them, because he knew all men, he knew our, that our hearts are wicked. But verse 25 says, and had no need that anyone should testify of man, for he knew what was in man, wickedness. And we know as believers, Jesus came to the cross to die for us. He, we know that Jesus went to the wedding to to do the miracles. Jesus was the miracle. Jesus is the miracle. Jesus wants to set you free. Wow, there's so much nuggets to cover in that chapter, but I wanted to lay it out and and do it as possible, as quickly as possible. Father, we thank you, Lord, for this word. Lord, we thank you for the miracles that Jesus did. Wow, what an amazing miracle that you did by coming here, Father, and dying for us. Cleaning, cleaning the temple, Father, from the just the falsehood. Lord, dying on the cross for our sins. 
We thank you for this, Lord. And Lord, we thank you for the people that are listening right now, Lord. Touch their hearts, Father. Let them know that there's a plan for them, Father, and that, Lord, they're going to be okay. We thank you, Jesus. We, we thank you so much, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. And God bless you guys, and thanks for listening to Growing in His Word. And log on anytime you want, man. This is where it's happening. It's, it, it, it's, it's awesome podcast here. Jesus Christ is working. We're going verse by verse through the Bible. It's a radical time. And thank you for tuning in. Can't wait to hit you next week on chapter 3 where Nicodemus is going to get witnessed to by Jesus. And it's one of my favorite chapters. <laughs> it's about being born again. <laughs>